So for our last curve sketching example, uh, we're going to look at a trig function, right? So this is, you know, here we're, we're a little bit less able to rely on experience um, because we're fairly familiar with polynomials, rational functions. We, we know how this goes. We've seen that um, you can figure out a lot of what's going on with polynomial and rational functions before you even take a derivative. Um, but here, it's a little bit less clear what's happening, right? So we're definitely going to need to compute those derivatives, see what's going on. In fact, we might as well get that out of the way to begin with, right? So the first derivative, if we use the chain rule, derivative of sine is cos, but then chain rule says we've got to multiply by 2, right? So 2 cos 2x, uh, derivative of sine is cosine, okay? And we'll write down the second derivative as well, okay? So derivative of cosine is negative sine. We get another 2, so we get minus 4 sine 2x, okay? And then minus minus, so plus 2 sine x. Okay, so there's our derivative, our function, our derivative, our second derivative. What can, we, what can we do with these? Well, we go to the checklist, right? We say, what can we get from f of x? Uh, well, we know the, the, the domain is all real numbers here, right? Because we're dealing with trig functions. We're dealing with sine functions that are defined everywhere. Um, there is no symmetry in the sense of an odd or an even function, but we do have one other property, right? We know that trig functions are periodic. We know that they repeat. They repeat every 2 pi. Um, so what we might do is we might start uh, by just working, let's say, from minus pi to pi, okay? So we'll start there. Once we've got this thing done for minus pi to pi, we can just sort of copy paste to get the graph um, everywhere else, right? And you can do zero to two pi if you want. Um, it's up to you which, which interval you choose to use. Now, can we do anything else with this? Well, let's see. What about intercepts? If we want to find intercepts here, we should factor, right? We know that sine 2x is the same thing as 2 sine x cos x. And now that's useful because now 2 sine x is common to both terms. Okay? This makes it a little bit easier to see where the, where the function is 0. Um, so it's going to be equal to 0 when either sine x is equal to 0 or when cos x is equal to 1. Now we know that cosine is equal to 1, right? When? Let's give ourselves a little unit circle to refer to, just for help, all right? Um, cos is equal to 1 over here, right? Multiples of 2 pi. Sine is equal to 0 at multiples of pi. So we know that, in fact, both of these are covered by just multiples of, of pi, right? So we know that minus pi is an intercept, 0 is an intercept, pi is an intercept. We've got those three intercepts. Okay, um, a little bit trickier is working out, you know, the sine, um, but it's not so bad. This bit here, right, um, because cosine is always between minus 1 and 1, um, this, is, this is always less than or equal to 0, right? This is between minus 2 and 0. Um, so all we really need to know is when is sine positive, when is sine negative, right? And uh, so sine is positive from 0 to pi, it's negative from minus pi to 0, right? So that means that our function, right, because this is always negative, it should be positive over here, negative over here. So we'll keep that in our back pocket. We move on to f prime. We want to do similar analysis there. Again, we've got this double angle that we have to deal with. So we remember that um, cos 2x so cos 2x, we could write this as cos squared x minus sine squared x. 
But with this cos x term here, it's more convenient to have everything in terms of cos. So this sine we could write as 1 minus cos squared. We get 2 cos squared minus 1. So we have 2 times 2 cos squared minus 1 minus 2 cos x. So altogether, we have 4 cos squared x minus 2 cos x minus 2. Um, or if you don't like having all those 2s, Two cos squared x minus cos x, okay, minus one. All right. Um, now that looks a little bit intimidating, right? What do you do with that? Well, it is a quadratic, right? This is basically a quadratic where if you put um, if you put u equal to cos x, we have 2u squared minus u minus 1. And of course, we want critical numbers, so we want this to be equal to 0. Well, this actually factors, right? We can factor this 2u, 1, u, 1. We want negative for the cross, so we want 2u minus 1 plus 1. That's going to do it, right? Um, 2u squared minus 2u plus u gives minus u, and then minus 1, okay? Okay, so that works. So we can factor this. This factors now as 2 times 2 cos x plus 1 times cos x minus 1, okay? All right, now... Critical numbers. So we want either cos x equals 1, which means x is equal to, well, on this interval, 0 is the only place, right? Or we want cos x equal to minus 1 half. So when is cosine equal to minus 1 half? Here. at 2 pi over 3, and here at minus 2 pi over 3, right? Remember that cosine is negative in the second and third quadrants. <coughs> okay, so that means we have x equals plus or minus, 2 pi over 3. Okay, so we should compute critical numbers. Um, we already know that f of 0 is 0. What about plus or minus 2 pi over 3? Um, let's work those out. Okay. So, f at 2 pi over 3 is going to be sine at 4 pi over 3 minus 2 sine 2 pi over 3. Okay? So, um, sine of 4 pi over 3. So 4 pi over 3 is here, third quadrant. We're negative, so this is minus root 3 over 2. 2 pi over 3 sine is positive, right? Minus 2 times root 3 over 2. So this is minus 3 root 3 over 2. And f at minus 2 pi over 3. Well, it's going to be the same thing, right? Uh, but it'll be minus 4 pi over 3, minus 2 pi over 3. Um, sine is an odd function, right? Um, in fact, we do have some symmetry here, right? Um, if we replace x by minus x, right, both of these functions are odd. So the whole thing is odd. So we do, in fact, have some symmetry. Um, 
that helps us, right? 3 root 3 over 2. Okay. So we can, we can plot those two points, right? So at, um, at 2 pi over 3, we're down at minus 3 root 3 over 2. So we're something like this, All right? Um, so this is going to be 2 pi over 3 minus 3 root 3 over 2. And then over here, kind of equal and opposite, minus 2 pi over 3, 3 root 3 over 2. Okay. Now, sine diagrams, <coughs> when you're dealing with trig functions, they're a little bit trickier. But again, we can realize that this will never be positive. Okay. And... 2 cos x plus 1, right? So this, we're looking at the, you know, this cos equal to 1. So we're looking at when is cos um, bigger than minus 1 half, when is it smaller than minus 1 half, right? Here are the two places where it's equal to minus 1 half. Um, so this is going to be positive here, negative here, right? So if we were going to draw a sine diagram for, for f prime, I know we're start, things are getting crowded, uh, it's going to look a little like this. Okay, Starting at minus pi, ending at pi, we've got 0, we've got 2 pi over 3, minus 2 pi over 3, and it's going to be negative here and here, positive, oh, sorry, this is negative, right? That's going to switch the signs. Plus, minus, minus, plus. Okay, so that tells us that we should be dealing with something which is increasing to a maximum, decreasing, Horizontal tangent at zero, decreasing again, minimum, and then heading back up again. And that seems to fit what we have here, right? So we increase from the critical point up through the max, down, up again. The only other thing we might want to check is, well, what about concavity? So here we have minus 8 sine x cos x plus 2 sine x. So this is 2 sine x times 1 minus 4 cos x. So critical numbers are going to happen when, or sorry, inflection points, possible inflection points are going to happen when either sine x equals 0. So that's 0 plus or minus pi, um, or when cos x equals a quarter. Um, now, that's, that's not a nice angle that you can find somewhere on your, on your unit circle, um, but it's going to be somewhere around, well, we know that it, let's see, yeah, cos x is equal to a half at pi over 3 and minus pi over 3. So it's going to be equal to a quarter somewhere around there, right? So what we're going to have, so there are some inflection points that are hard to get exactly, but we'll see that we can just sort of, we can fake it a little bit, 0. So I'm going to put in, so here's pi over 2. And just a little bit before pi over 2 is going to be this center, let's call it maybe theta 1. And here's minus pi over 2, and just a little bit before that minus pi over 2, we're going to have this theta 2, something like that, right? Um, and now we say, okay, let's see. So between 0 and pi, sine is positive. This factor here is going to be, well, cos is going to be less than a quarter 
just in, in this part here, right? Less than a quarter there, bigger than a quarter there. Um, so one minus cos, so this is gonna be positive. So from that theta one up to pi, we have a plus sign. Then it's gonna be negative, okay? Now, at zero, we get a sign change from sine x, but we don't get a sign change yet from, from this factor. So we switch back to positive, and then we get a sign change. So we have something that looks like that for concavity. That's a little bit trickier, right? And I haven't even plugged these, these values in. Uh, if you really wanted to kind of get clever, we can, we can sort out those values. It's gonna take a little bit more work and more time, and we're already running quite long on this video. Um, we can work out that if cos x is a quarter, we can work out what sine x has to be, right? We can use Pythagorean identity. Uh, and from that, we can figure out what sine 2x has to be. We can, we, can, we can plug these in. But more or less what we know is that somewhere around here, and somewhere around here, we expect some inflection points. And so now we can do this. We can go up, concave down, till we hit that inflection point, concave up, till we get to that horizontal tangent, right? Then we're concave down, until we hit that other inflection point, concave up, through the minimum and back up to the intercept, right? And now if we wanted to get the graph everywhere, we just repeat. If we wanted to go um, to two pi, three pi, we just do another copy of this thing, right? So we go up and we repeat. And if we wanted to go the other way, we can repeat, right? So we can, we can keep repeating that graph and we can get it for all real numbers if we wanted to.